Hello everybody, what's up? Hi, you doing? Welcome back to another Game Maker tutorial, and today I'll be showing you another addition to my uh, transition series. Like, you know, the last three videos. <laughs> Two or three, I'm not sure anymore. In this one we will have a very simple, a simple uh, comical like, the expanding circle that appears as soon as you walk through a door. It doesn't have to be a door, it can be walking out the screen, into a house, whatever. But this is just for demonstration purposes, so without further ado, let me get up Game Maker Studio and I'll show you how to make it. So, as you see in my project file right here, there's a lot of stuff already added here. If you want to download this specific project file to take a look through it, uh, or if you want to move along with me, I will leave the empty one and the finished project file in the description. So you can go download those. In this one we have uh, three sprites, wall 32x32, 32 32, player 32x32, 32 32, and door, which is not 30 but is 50 by 80 I found this on the internet, I have no idea if it's allowed to be used commercially, and that I'm just using it for the purpose of this tutorial. We have the most important script here, which is room go to transition. This is basically the one that will create the transition itself. And it says, uh, that says uh, how long it's going to take, which room to go to, etc, etc. Uh, it's uh, this is for the collision and the movement for the player, just so we have uh, an object on the screen that we can run around with. We have an OBJ wall. It's just an OBJ wall. Isn't it? We have a player with movement code. And when it stands beside the door and presses, when we press up, it will it will activate the door, meaning that the transition will start. The OBJ door is completely empty except for the fact that depth is set to 1. And so, so that the player stands in front of it and not behind it. And this transition which is empty but persistent. We have three rooms. We are initialized with a numerator circle. That's the way I will refer to the transition in code. And then it goes to the next room, which is basically an almost empty room with some walls, a player, and a door. And the next room to go to will then be this. So it will go from red to blue, and if you go through this door, it will go back to red, and etc. So, the not all of this is especially necessary for the transition itself. It's a lot easier. You can just use a room go to transition, assist transition. But I will use this as a way to simplify it and show it how I do it myself, how I would use it. But if you want just the room go to transition and sys transition plus the code that you have to add to the object you, that you want to start a transition with, then I'll probably leave that in the description as well. To start with, we'll open OPG door here and add a create event. Right, so, and I will call this initialize variable. And for those that have seen the other, my other transition videos, this seems the code that in the creation code in the creation event will seem very, very familiar. I use kind, and I will let that be transition dot circle. I will be using next room. Set that to for now no one. X x equals minus one and yy equals minus one. The reason I use these codes repetitively through my most of my transition videos is because I'm trying to put together a pack of all the transition that you can download or buy for one euro or dollar on the Game Maker page, but for now I'm still doing it, so it will be something in the future. Then I'll also do an animation speed and set the, oh, come on, and set the image speed to zero because this is an animated door I will open. Then I'll add in a step event, and this will basically run creates is transition and start transition. There we will see if place meeting x and y obj player and obj player dot door. This is the variable that comes on when the player presses the up key. So if the player is colliding with the door and he has and the player has pressed the up key, then we want something to happen. We will to go room, go to transition. The room will be next room, the transition will be kind and the steps. Let's say I found 90 to be a good number for this. 
Now the next part is nothing that I'll be using in this video especially, but you can do that if you want to. And that is to check if x6 is not equal to minus 1. That means that x6 has been changed, meaning that you want to change the player position. Well, so it says transition.x6 equal x6 because we will later take part of changing the player position. We will not do that at this point of time. And we will set image speed to equal to 0.12. I found that to be a good one as well. And just so that the uh, animation doesn't repeat itself. Stop animation. I will do uh, image speed equal to 0. And image... Uh, oh, what is it called again? Image index is equal to image number, number minus 1. Okay, that should be okay with the door. Next, we want to go over to the sys expansion. The way I want to have set this up is that for half of the steps that we gave in OBJ door, so we we'll just go in here, we gave it 90 steps for it to do its job. For half of it, it will expand the circle to get bigger, and half of it, it will reduce the alpha so that the, after the room has been transitioned. So this, the way I've done that is, first of all, I've done set the radius and set that to 0 0.01. I have and called expand. There's a boolean just to see if we are continuously expanding. And when this turns false, it will start to reduce the alpha to change room. I will set a step, which is a total amount of steps that the animation has gone, and time to 30 for now, but that, will, that gets changed by the script later on. We'll also set an x, x to minus 1 and y, y to minus 1. So when these numbers get changed, it means that the player position has been to be set to the new number. But if it's minus 1, then it's alright, nothing happens. Okay, add in a step event. Here we will increase step and expand circle. There. So step plus plus. And if step wait, step is greater than time. Instant destroy. So if there's more steps than time allows, then it will just destroy itself. Next we'll see if we have to exp if expand is true like that and if it is we'll want to do radius plus equal as this is a room that is 640 by uh, 480 the number of the radius has to be around 4 to 500 for it to cover the whole room but that will have to change that will change depending on the size of the room that you're in so you will have to test and see what ha happens but for me 500 divided by mm, I believe it was divided by time divided by 2 is the correct one. That way it will increase until the half the time has passed and it reach around 500. So if radius is greater, greater or equal to 500 and expand because we want this next code to only be run once and not more. We want to expand to false, so that when it's run once, it's gonna not run again. We want to do an event perform ev other ev user zero and room go to next room. Basically, the event perform that I've added here will uh, check. If the X and Y has been changed, I can actually do that right now, so you can see. Add in user defined user and change player position would be the correct one. And do this almost the same one as the one in the door in the OBJ door. We'll if XX has been changed, and OBJ player X will be set to XX. And if YY has been changed, 
then og play dot y will be set to yy just like that so if you do not change any of these variables then the player will just stay in the same position in the new room that's basically what happens here so half the time has passed the radius is covering the whole screen right here we will change room and perform change the player position and then we can now get into a real deal which is the draw GUI draw the soak and fade in here we'll uh, make two temporary variables which I'll call WW in it to get the window height and window oh, well, sorry there's a problem window width and window height like so and I can divide them by two because they will be designing uh, putting the circle where it's supposed to be then I will be draw set color see black draw set alpha I'll get to doing the alpha in a second and this will only have to be done if it's not expand that means that while the circle is expanding the alpha will not change draw circle and x will then be ww h h and radius will be radius and outline will be false and last but not least draw set alpha to one so we don't mess others other alphas We'll start with 1 minus abs step minus time divided by 2 divided by time divided by 2. There. If we didn't put this part here, this would basically just fade out everything. After half the time, it would then fade everything back in. But we want it to stay fully op uh, opaque while we're expanding the circle. And then afterwards, we need to, uh, to fade out. That's basically how I've been doing it here. Save this file. And that should be everything done. Now let's just run it and see if it works. Wait, there is one important step missing and that is to give the next room to the doors. We need to, in the creation, oh, seriously, I hate when that happens. Save. In the creation event, in the creation code of the doors, we have to add what room we want to go to. So we'll set the next room to equal, let's say, this was room, room two. By the way, if you want to change the player position in the room when you, after the transition is done, this is what you would do, like xx equal to let's say 500, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. And in RM2 I will go into the creation code of the door, next room is equal to RM1. And that's everything you need for this transition to work. As you see, I can walk up to the door and press up and it's change B. Uh, expand the circle and fades out and goes to the next room as it's supposed to do. Everything is working functionally, functioning perfectly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then a like and subscribe is highly appreciated and it helps me out a bunch. And if you have any suggestions of what else I could do in, the, uh, in a future video, then my Twitter is in the description and if you want you can put a comment about it and I'll be coming back to it in a, little, in a while. So in the meantime, I hope you had a have a good time and have a great day.